All right, we got to talk about this Raw show from Monday night, a show that at some points I felt like I was watching last week's show. It just felt like a rerun. It's just it was just three hours. Um, I I think that the Randy Orton and um, Bray Wyatt stuff is really goofy, and then th- that finish of that match. I mean, I get whatever. It just feels like in 2020 that when you see something like that, it just feels like so. It, it feels like it's like. You know, because nobody else does this stuff anymore, it feels like so outdated. But you know, WWE's still doing it, so I guess in in their world it's not. But it just feels to me that it's like, you know, that's the stuff that you would do before. You know, and I know the Bray Wyatt character is all about that. But um, I have to ask a question because oh no, 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 because okay, so so like it's okay. It's kind of it's like a weird thing. It's like. I mean, I recognize that Randy Orton is a super talent. Okay, I mean, he, obviously he's he's everything he does looks good. His um, he doesn't make mistakes in the ring. His timing is good. His promos for his character are good. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's a real pro out there. Okay, and and he's, I mean, in some ways, I think like yeah, he's one of the best guys out there. But every time I think that, like hey, Randy Orton, he's so good. It, you know, one thing always hits me in the head, and it's like, shouldn't the guy who everyone, if, if you're touting a guy as the best wrestler, shouldn't he have like, I'm not saying he should always have the best matches, because nobody always has the best matches. Everybody's got, because they're good and they're bad. But if somebody is like the best, like Ric Flair was the best, or Ray Stevens was the best, or or whoever, right? Jack Briscoe, you know, all these guys all through time. Dave, I know where you're going, but here's a problem with all of this. Yes. You're coming to this conclusion today on a show where Randy Orton had to have a match with Bray Wyatt in his Mr. Rogers outfit. No, but that, Nobody's but having a good match. No, but that's not the point. It wasn't about tonight's match. It's about 20 freaking years of watching Randy Orton. And it's just like, I've watched Randy Orton for 20 years, and it's like, aside from like Mick Foley and that match with Edge... And, you know, there's a few others. He had some good match with John Cena here and there. It's like, shouldn't the guy... And and it's funny because there are guys who I respect that are in the business that wrestle and will tell you that Randy Orton is the best guy in the business. And I keep thinking whenever I see that, it's like, I know he's really good. I know he's really talented and all this. But I keep coming to the conclusion, shouldn't the best guy have, like, a lot of the best matches? I mean, isn't that part of being the best guy, having the best matches? It depends on what you think about what being the best guy is. I mean, if you're a wrestler and you're out there and you're doing this to make a paycheck and feed your family, and that's the most important thing, more so than, you know, necessarily getting a match of the year or whatever, and a guy is a night off and you never get hurt and it's easy and it goes great and there's never a problem. And you don't get over. Some people love that. And you don't get over. Who has who does Randy Orton get over? I mean, like to me, it's like okay, you say that. Well, nobody's then, getting over right now. Nobody's okay, getting but, anybody over. Okay, but the point is, is like okay, if you're if you're like to me, like the great worker, the great worker. If you're not going to have the, the match of the year, great worker, which to me is still that's the best worker is the guys who have the best matches. But the other thing is the guys who make guys that aren't that good look great, and he's not that guy either. He, I mean, like you watch Randy Orton and forget about tonight with Bray Wyatt, but you put Randy Orton in there with, with, um, just a guy, Bobby Lashley. I just put, let's just, just, even though I know they're both heels, but you put Randy Orton in there with Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley is physically impressive. He's a great athlete. He's not that great of a worker. Um, but you know, he's, he's impressive looking. If you put Bobby Lashley in there with Randy Orton, is Randy Orton going to make Bobby Lashley look better than Everybody else on the roster. No. Not, he's not even going to make him look better than 15 guys on the roster. So it's like, um, and it's not even an argument that Randy Orton should be in the Hall of Fame, because I actually think Randy Orton should be in the Hall of Fame, and I'm, I'm sure he will well, be I also someday. have to look at from Randy's standpoint. Randy Orton is a main eventer in 2020. Randy Orton debuted in WWE in like 2002. Randy yeah. Orton's been a main eventer nearly the entire time. He's never because had they, neck be, surgery. He's never yeah, missed whoa, 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 time with injuries. Whoa, 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 Randy Orton's had more injuries than most. He has not had Randy, more injuries than most. Randy Orton has had a chronic shoulder problem. Randy Orton almost needed neck surgery. He was told he needed neck surgery, except he got a second opinion from a doctor who said that uh, you can go without it. But he absolutely, Randy Orton's got, you know, he's got the same, he's got the same injuries as everybody else. 
you know i mean um i don't know like i mean now he hasn't had them but he also he works okay you know grant everyone's got an easier schedule now but before when everybody else is doing 180 days he's doing 60 so yes sounds like a pretty damn smart guy to me I'm not saying he's not a smart guy. I didn't say that. I, I'm not talking about IQ. I'm just saying that. I mean, Randy Orton's been very lucky that that he was put in a position where they decided because of his look that he was going to be the top guy, whether he drew on top. And sometimes there were times he did, and there were times when he absolutely did not draw on top. But it didn't. It didn't. He didn't lose a spot over it like a lot of other guys would, because it's a cosmetic business, and he's six four and a half, and he's. But you know what, Dave? Good... He's not the only guy that they decided was going to be one of their top guys. But he's and the there one have they been didn't give up. a million Randy Orton's that have come and gone over the last twenty years. They how tried many, it. How they how gave many, up how, on him. How many? How and many? And he's how, still here. Oh, he's still here. How many? How many were? Yeah, but a lot of them, like Dwayne and Batista, walked out on their own. That's why it's not like you know. How many? How many guys were protected at the level of Randy Orton that got over that that didn't didn't get over? Okay, I mean a guy, you know, like it. It was you know, there's there's guys who get over on their own, and then there's guys, and it's not a knock on Randy Orton because honestly, like if I was in charge when I the first time I saw Randy Orton. In OVW, the first time I thought this guy's going to be a star, and then a year into it, it's like he's for sure going to be a star. And if I was, you know, running the company, I would protect Randy Orton. I would make him one of the stars, especially now because he's he's such a good talker for his character and everything like that. I would do that. But there's also a lot of other guys I would do that to as well. And I believe that if they were protected the same way, that they would probably, because they're a little bit more charismatic, be even bigger stars. But they don't get that opportunity. Um, so, I mean, you know, I mean, how many guys get, you know, like essentially protected at that level? I mean, I, I can't even come up with a guy who's been who, who a guy where the promotion has just decided he's going to be our guy. He's our prototype. I mean, Sting was like that, too, where it's just like no matter what, we're going to push him. And those guys, you know, I mean, and, and Lex Luger was another one. It's like those guys, they're, they're going to get over to a certain degree. Well, he's a guy who is in a promotion that has a specific style of working, and he's gone out there for 20 years, and he's done the style that they like, and they don't care if he has a five-star match or not. They just want him to go out there and have what they consider to be their style of match, and he never hurts anybody, and he... He hurt, he, he, he hurt Ali right in the Rarely gets push. hurt. Everyone's hurt somebody. I, it, name a guy, and they've hurt somebody. I mean, okay, but he, it happens. He, he hasn't. He hasn't hurt. Edge he does not got, have a reputation got, of a Mister Anderson. He does not have a reputation. Oh, Mister Anderson, a Nia Jax. Okay, well, great. sometimes accidents happen. Okay, but I mean, he's he's hurt. He's hurt people no more, no less than anybody else. Other than yeah, of course you can always pick Nia Jax. Of course, because she's an un- she's an unusual person, you know, in that situation. But then and here we go. Nia Jax is protected more than anyone any also, and she's on top. Yes, and unlike Randy Orton, she never has good matches, and she doesn't have good promos, and she's not somebody that everybody praises, well, and they want to go in there and have matches with them. Well, it's I'm, a not, night off. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that you know that Nia Jax should be in the Hall of Fame. I'm just saying that. People will say Randy Orton is the best wrestler in the business, and I'm I I'm like. And I mean, you know, like I said, like sometimes I think he really is good, but at the end of the day, shouldn't like the guy who's good be a guy who either draws a lot, which Randy Orton really doesn't do, um, has super matches, which he rarely has. He's had some, he rarely has, um, elevates new guys, makes people look better than they are, which I've never seen him do at a, at, at any kind of a real level. Um, you know, like again, okay. Uh, you know, just a guy when he comes out where you're going to go, okay, this guy's going to be, this guy's going to be really exciting and I can't wait to see him. It's like, oh, it's Randy Orton and he's going to be fine. You know, and it's like, you know, in a three hour, put it this way, in a three hour raw, Randy Orton's not a highlight most weeks. Randy Orton's part of the three hour raw. And to me, the top guy should be when the guy comes out, it's like, oh, okay, now it's going to be fun. Like when, 
when Ric Flair used to come out or even Bill Goldberg for his minute or or Shawn Michaels or, or you know, Bret Hart or somebody like that, where they come out and you go, we're going to see something really good. You know, we're going to see something really fun or we're going to see the crowd explode and all this. And it's Randy Orton. He's reliable. Who are you going to see that with on Raw now? Um, on Raw right now? Um, I'm not saying not push Randy Orton, um, but I mean, as far as like, who would I rather see in a match on Raw? I'm not saying who you'd rather see. I'm saying those names that you mentioned, there's nobody like that. Well, there's nobody like that because they don't let, because they don't let, they don't let people be like, they don't let people like, Ricochet could be that in a heartbeat. Ricochet was like that on the Indies. When Ricochet would come out, everybody would get super excited, you know, um, and there's probably, Cedric Alexander could be like that. I mean, Grant, I don't know if Cedric would be quite the top guy. I know Ricochet can be the top guy because he's been he's been in the situation, you know, on shows with loaded with workers where he stands out anyway. Um, Keith Lee. I mean, I've seen Keith Lee absolutely steal shows. Um, so, yeah, th- those are all guys, you know. Um, I'm sure if I like sat down on the roster, I could probably find several more. Yes, uh, you could find who could do that somewhere else. I'm talking about in WWE today. Who is, do who is w- doing that? They could all Nobody. do it. In w- they could all do it in WWE if they were allowed to do it. Every single one of them. We've already seen it. They did it in NXT. Every one of them. They were more exciting in NXT. The same freaking system um, than Randy Orton is in WWE. Yeah, and they're and these people are all in WWE right now. We're arguing over. I don't even know what right now. But the point of it is on this show here. I have had many shows where I thought that Randy Orton was a highlight of the show when he was doing all of these great promos because there's a lot of different aspects of wrestling and Randy Orton's promos in that Edge feud were oh, the, far and was, away highlights of these Raw shows. Oh no, Randy Orton with Edge, but that was that that was okay. That was the exception, not the rule. Randy Orton throughout his career, like when Randy Orton did those that, that Edge stuff, it's like, oh my God, that's right. Randy Orton can be really good. It wasn't like, oh yeah, this is like. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of who um, somebody that uh, Kevin Owens, even where Kevin Owens goes out there and does a really good promo. It's like you expect it because he always does a great promo. Randy Orton was like, oh, my God, with Edge, he's like all motivated and he's awesome. And he was. I'm not like, look, I know the guy's super talented and, and the Randy Orton Edge feud. Well, was he actually a great said feud. part of the problem right there, Dave, which was he was motivated to do a feud. Yeah. What the hell has he been motivated about lately? A feud with Bray Wyatt? How in the world are you going to have a great promo talking about a Bray Wyatt storyline? I'm not. And you're not going to have good matches. I'm not blaming him for Bray Wyatt. I mean, that's the. I'm pointing out that like you're not going to have good Randy Orton from now until this feud ends. The only. It ain't going to happen. The only guy, the only guy who could pull something out of Bray Wyatt or the Fiend, I shouldn't say Bray Wyatt, but the Fiend was Daniel Bryan. I mean, he's the only one. And I don't expect everyone to be Daniel Bryan. I don't expect anyone. Actually, Kevin Owens got a good match having him on SmackDown. It was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't that good. I it, mean, was it was pretty fun. good. It was all right. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It, put it this way: that match would have been what, uh, at best, third last night. At best, third. Well, I would hope that if they put that match on Takeover, it would have been much better than an eight-minute SmackDown match in the main event of a TV show. But you were saying how good it was. It was I mean, good. Like, for The Fiend, it was yeah, the it best Fiend match I saw probably since Daniel Bryan. Because well, there agree. was no magic. I, I, they went I in agree. there, they threw each other around, and they agree. pounded I, on I, each other. I, you know what it I showed agree. me? It showed me that there's a way that Bray Wyatt can be a fun worker. And what okay. he's doing on Raw is not that way. Okay. So what you've just done is said... Kevin Owens is really freaking good, but and you and 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 better than Randy Orton because Randy Orton couldn't do that. And they were no, both they in had the a different of- style of match. Randy Orton is not having the match that Kevin Owens and Bray Wyatt had, well, where they run go. into each other and they suplex each other all over and pound on each other. Well, there you go. Well, he doesn't want to do Owen, that. Kevin Owens figured it out, and Randy Orton didn't figure it out. Well, what does that say? Kevin Owens is a better promo than Randy Orton. I get more excited when Kevin Owens is on TV than Randy Orton. And and then I'm not saying Kevin Owens is a better wrestler than Randy Orton. I'm just saying he delivers more, which at the end of the day, you should be judged by not your potential and not what you do when, when you're really happy with your best friend, but what you do on a normal night. That's what you should be judged on as a normal night guy. And um, anyway, that's I, I, I just like 
for whatever reason, the the idea that like Randy Orton is the greatest wrestler in the world, it's like I don't think anyone actually says that Randy Orton is the best wrestler uh, in the world. Many do. Scott Scott Dawson or what's with uh, Dash Harwood. Um, those are the rival, revival guys, and they're and they're great workers. They'll say it. Um, a lot of guys have said it. They believe uh, right now, after working in AEW, that the best wrestler in the world is Randy Orton. Ask them. Don't All ask right, me. I'll ask them next time. We never ask, interviewed. A, a, ask, ask them because he, uh, Dax Harwood has said the best wrestler. Well, maybe in the we should have them on the show, and you can ask him why Randy Orton's the best wrestler in the world. I think I'm just going to ask him the next time I talk ask to him. Ask him. I will do it on the air. I want to hear this argument. I don't know. Well, I guess we could get those guys if we needed to. They're I want them gonna... on the air to talk about Randy Orton. Okay, we got to talk about this Raw show. We're never okay. Get okay. That. Okay. That's that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'll I'll, I'll invite them on the show, and uh, we can talk about Randy Orton, and we'll have a nice discussion about that. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.